You hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence keeps this blog ad-free. <laughs> Hello folks, welcome to Inkdependence.com. I'm Mike, and this is going to be a new pen. So, this is the Esterbrook Camden. Take that and throw it over there. Uh, it comes in this very nice uh, presentation sort of box. It's uh, like a tweedy fabric. You get a red one when you get the Esterbrook Esty. The Camden comes in this cool gray, which I think is very nice. You open this guy up with magnets and you can see it comes with a cleaning cloth and such that I have not used because this is a loner pen. So thank you very much to uh, Lena at Pen Boutique and Carrie at Kenro, Kenro Industries who uh, uh, collaborated to get this pen to me for review. So thanks for the loner. So since it's loner and I haven't uh, I haven't actually paid them money for it yet, uh, yet uh, I, I haven't messed with this. But it's a very nice like silky cleaning cloth uh, situation. Uh, inside the box, you find the pen. I've also got a nib here, which I'm going to set aside for now. We'll talk about that in a sec. This is going to be a combo review. I've got a couple of things to talk about here. Okay, so this is the Esterbrook Camden. And if you're looking at this and going like, hey, that pattern looks really familiar. Well, that's because you've used one of these. Like, almost certainly you have used a black and white marble-covered composition book. Why do I say that? Because everybody has used a black and white marble-covered composition book for like, I don't know, a couple hundred years or something. This is a venerable pattern. And as soon as I show this pen to people, they're like, hey, that looks like those composition books. And I'm like, yeah, that's on purpose. So this pen has actually been a, a very surprising kind of experience for me because I hadn't had one of these these in my hands before I got this one. And so the first thing I noticed, I picked it up, I'm like, oh, this is kind of heavy. I wasn't expecting that. The Estes, like this one, this is an oversized Estee, and it's quite a bit bigger, but it's also lighter because this is a plastic bodied pen, whereas this one is anodized aluminum. So this comes in a variety of finishes, uh, black and silver and some other things. And then you have these composition finishes and uh, they're all aluminum pens. And I really actually, I had never even bothered to look at that before. So uh, this particular uh, composition sort of finish is the black and white, which is the most classic, I think. They also have a nice spring green one, which is a very bright green. And uh, I have like, you see composition books in a bunch of different finishes. Uh, I have yellow and black ones, I think mostly. But um, but this one, I'm like, oh, this is classic. Gotta, get, gotta do the black and white one, right? Right. So it's heavy. That was a first surprise. Second is I can feel the pattern a little bit here. So this is anodized aluminum, which uh, is then lacquered over. And they must do a couple of stages of lacquer or something because it's definitely got like a like a smooth clear coat on it or something, but it also has, like you can feel the, you can feel the dots, which, which is pretty neat. Like it's a subtle texture, but I dig it. All right, also on the outside of this pen, you have the uh, Esterbrook logo up here on the finial, nothing on the bottom of the pen, just sort of a curved flat space. I do like the flat tops and bottoms. I'm a flat top fan. Then you have this very nice clip, which is uh, got this, I think it's got a very smooth line to it. Like that looks like a, like a real fast train or something, you know, like it looks like it's from the future. You can also see on this clip that it is one solid piece that is like then uh, bolted to this uh, spring that goes inside the cap here. Uh, and so it's a, it's a very, it's a fairly stiff, but very responsive kind of clip. Like you can definitely clip that on like shirts or pants or uh, pin cases or whatever. This pen is, uh, it feels very durable. It's a, it's a hefty, uh, a hefty pen. And then you have this little, little bump down here, but that's, uh, that's it for the clip. Very, simple. On the cap, as far as ornamentation, you have this uh, single band in uh, that's like engraved in there. And also it says Esterbrook right here, which really fades into uh, the design. So if you pull the design back a little bit, like you can tell there's a little bit of a, something different there, but it's very subtle. I like subtle branding on pens. I want the pen. You see this pen, you're like, oh, it's an Esterbrook uh, Camden with a composition notebook. You don't need to have like Esterbrook Camden on it or anything. It's just kind of, you know what it is. All right. So let's take the cap off. <laughs> I love unclapping this thing slowly because it just kind of goes blurring and springs off a little bit. It's not going to throw the cap off here. This cap is actually very heavy. Um, this whole pen capped weighs 37 grams, which is fairly... Uh, which is fairly heavy for a pen, really. But the cap, I mean, uncapped, this is 19 grams. So that means that the cap is almost half the total weight of the pen. So can you post it? Yeah, absolutely. It's got a black liner in there. You can definitely post it. But notice that even in my beefy mitts, this is a pretty long pen when you post it. And it does feel kind of overbalanced to me. It's not uh, It's not the best balance posted. You can if you want to, but I'm just going to set this over here because that's not going anywhere. This 
It's perfectly good. I'll just sit on the desk and it'll look nice. Uh, uncapped uh, and unposted, this pin is a great length. I really like the unposted length of this thing, which is uh, 129 millimeters, which is five, about five inches, uh, which is kind of, that's kind of the perfect length for a pen, I think, right now. I mean, look, at it's, it's not like falling into the web of my hand. It's not jutting out. Good. The section here is metal and fairly smooth, but it is anodized and it does have a slight texture to it. Like you can just barely feel it. I don't know if you can actually see it. Let's see. Can I get it on the camera? Yeah, maybe a little bit there. You can see there's like just a very slight bit of texture. Like they left it not quite smoothly polished and then uh, anodized it and it's got just a little bit of something. And that's good because it means that this, this section isn't slippery. Uh, you also have this nice lip at the bottom. Uh, this section diameter is quite nice between 10 and 11 millimeters, which is kind of my perfect, that's my perfect zone for, for section diameters. Uh, but you've also got this lip to keep your fingers from slipping. You've got the little bit of texture. You have these threads back here, which are metal threads and metal threads can sometimes be a bit aggressive. I think if you held it back on the threads, like if you hold your pen very far back, I'm not sure how comfortable that would be long-term to sort of on your finger here, but it's not, it's not hurting me. Like these aren't sharp threads or anything, but I don't know if I'd want to hold it here forever, but down here, it's great. And that's usually how I hold a pen. So it works perfectly for me. Now the nib on here is the second part of the story here. And you saw I had an extra nib over here. So let me tell you about these nibs a little bit. So this nib, this is a Schmidt nib, as is this one, and you can tell a Schmidt nib unit because it's got this collar around the um, around the housing. And this little brass collar, I think, is probably meant to keep any of the strain from uh, putting a, a nib and feed and stuff in here from splitting the collar over time. If you ever had a collar split on you, it is annoying. Now these are Schmidt nibs, and Schmidt nibs, uh, this one is actually a fine. It's got a nice big F there, which I appreciate a nice big bold nib marking. I'm a fan of telling me what size the darn nib is. The fine on a Schmidt is not messing around. It's actually pretty darn fine. Uh, and this one is like that. Uh, but I mean, it's a fine nib. You don't really need to see me do a writing a sample with a fine nib. Uh, you can just trust me, the fine nib works perfectly well. Now, uh, you can't really uh, swap these with like Yovos or anything like that. They're uh, a different sort of size. The feed is different. The curvature is different. So it doesn't really work like that. But you can, and I did, get this nib, which, there we go, is a medium, as you see there. But this isn't a regular medium. This is a medium journaler nib. In fact, I think the journaler only comes in medium. That's kind of the deal. Now, the journaler is a special nib grind done by Gina Salarino of Custom Nib Studio. You can find her on the interwebs if you want more grinds and stuff done by her. But she has been working with Estherbrook to grind nibs for the Camden, which I think is a great idea. And so uh, I know Gina a little bit. And so I contacted her and said, hey, Gina, I'm going to do this review on this Camden. And I got this journaler nib. What's the deal with that journaler nib, man? And she said, uh, hey, so awesome. The journaler nib is actually uh, sort of an homage to one of the vintage Esterbrook nibs. I said, oh, well, that's really cool. I like vintage Esterbrook nibs. Uh, which one is it? And she said, well, it's a 9314 medium, 9314M. I was like, uh, oh yeah, yeah, I know the 9314M. That's my favorite Esterbrook nib. <laughs> it's actually in my uh, Esterbrook SD. Now the 93314M is a stub nib. It's also got this, uh, what, do you, what do they call this thing? Uh, oh, it's a relief. That's what they call it when they have it cut out like that. And also if you look closely at the tipping there, you can see that it's slightly oblique. I said, oh, is this uh, is this meant to be oblique? Because the, the journaler is just not oblique. She's like, no, because, uh, and I said, oh, you didn't want to inflict that on the general populace? And she said, right. So what's the journaler nib? Well, I'll do a little writing sample here in a bit, but the journaler nib, think of it as sort of a sharp stub or a pretty lenient cursive italic, which puts it in sort of a good zone for me because cursive italics and heart like formal italics and stuff can be pretty tough for me to use uh, since I like the oblique. I also rotate inward a little bit, which drives my wife crazy. And uh, so sometimes if you have a sharp nib, it just digs in at a corner. Well, the journaler has not really done that for me. The first few times I picked it up, I had to adjust my, my hold a little bit, uh, but now I've gotten used to it. And the more I use this nib, honestly, the more I like it. Uh, so this uh, journaler nib is pretty nice. And you can just get this on the pen. Like, they'll just send it to you on a pen. Uh, it does jack the price up a little bit. So the regular price for this pen uh, on the street is 156 bucks for the uh, for the fountain pen. The rollerball is a bit less. I think it's like 140-ish, but like whatever. You're going to get the fountain pen, lackla. And uh, if you get it with the journaler nib, that adds uh, a bit to the price. It goes up to 196 
five, six, seven, so 40 bucks, which is about what this would cost uh, if you were to send a pen to Gina and have her uh, put a uh, put a, a stub or an italic or something on there for you. But you can just get it from the from the store like this, perfectly ready to go, and you don't have to wait. You don't have to ship something somewhere. It gets shipped to you. So that's great. I really like that uh, the uh, pin companies are starting to do that, and it pushes some business toward friends of mine who are grinder uh, friends of mine who are grinders uh, like Gina. So uh, that's really cool. So good job, Kenro, for working with Gina and uh, solid choice, Gina, to uh, to do these nibs. And I, I really like this one a lot. So, all right. Oh, I didn't open up the pen. Let's uh, open up this guy. Uh, it unscrews right here at this joint, right before the threads. Uh, if you're looking at that, you're like, I don't see where it uh, where it comes loose. I would have suspected it to be here too. Well, it's not. It's right before the threads. Right there. These are metal threads. You're not going to want to eyedropper this thing. Comes with a converter. Also comes with a cartridge. That's right, right there. Uh, but I'm going to use a converter if I have the choice. That's just, that's how I roll. I know a lot of people are cartridge people. Not really, but jam. If you look inside the barrel, uh, you can just see that it is, uh, it is anodized in there uh, and it's aluminum. Well, I guess it's not anodized. It's just aluminum in there. But anyway, there you go. So uh, nice, nice threads. Takes a, takes a little while to to screw that barrel on, but that's cool. You don't want that part coming off. Now, how many threads, how many screws, uh, turns does this take? One. <laughs> takes, takes one. And you got that pop because you have this sort of uh, slip and seal cap system in there. Spring loaded, keeps this guy nice and uh, nice and nice and ready to go. Okay, so let's uh, do a writing sample and then let's, let's look at this next to a whole bunch of other pens. How's that sound? Okay, I think it sounds good. Okay, so here we have the journaler uh, nib in the Esterbrook Camden. This is a journaler. This is by Gina, and actually, I'm surprised and uh, kind of happy with how quickly this started up because I've been waving this pen around for probably half an hour doing various takes of this video. So neat, good job, journaler, for you know starting right up. Now uh, this nib is uh, it's sort of a stubby, italicy sort of situation. So you get nice wide downstrokes and pretty thin cross strokes, just to juxtapose those guys right there. Uh, so yeah, it's a it's a nice job. <laughs> you know what? This actual this little curly cue action doesn't usually get me nib variation, and it's because of the way I hold my pen. So don't be fooled by that. Look at my straight line ones. I actually turn my paper a lot of times because my hold is weird, and so it is <laughs> it is very different. But when I do this, I I do it wrong. I, so yeah, this I'm gonna stop doing this, even though it makes me happy. I'm just gonna give you the hashes because that actually shows you that it's different. Yeah, neat. All right, so this is Esterbrook Camden. And uh, this ink is, what did I put in here? Oh yeah, that's right, this is Aurora. Sepia. An ink that really has been growing on me. I did the review on this one a little while ago, and I still really like this. Uh, really like this nib. Now a lot of people like this little. You want to have a little squiggly doodad there, and then smear it. Uh, I, I don't think that shows that much because it depends on the paper more than anything else. Uh, but uh, yeah, it does show. I mean, I got some wetness there. So yeah, this is a this is a really nicely behaved nib, and uh, and I dig it. And like I said, I've been digging it more the more I've used it. Because when I first got this pen, I'm like, nah, I don't know, it's kind of heavy, nib's a little bit sharp. But as I adapted to this nib just a little bit, it is uh, it's real nice. Okay, let's look at the uh, look, let's look at this pen next to a whole bunch of other pens so you can get a, an idea of, you know, what the size of the Camden is. Okay, so here we have a whole bunch of pens. Um, and I, I just tried to give like a smattering of sizes. You're going to have something in this realm. Okay, so this is the Kaveco Sport. This is the Pilot Prera. We have here the uh, Sailor 1911 standard size. This is a Franklin Kristoff Model 46. We have here a Vanishing Point. We have here a Twisby 580 ALR. How's that for a mouthful? The Twisby Eco, the Platinum 3776, and the uh, uh, Lamy All-Star, the Diplomat Arrow, then the Camden. You can see the Camden is 
is like head and shoulders, at least shoulders above the rest. And then you have the uh, Twisby 700, the VAC, which is a pretty good size pin and they are about the same size. And then just slightly bigger than that is the SD Oversize. So the SD Oversize completely fills this thing. Let's throw a 823 in here too, because a lot of people might know that one. So there's the 823. Um, but this, is a, this cannon's a big old pin. It doesn't look that big, right? When you put it in this tray like, oh, Dang, that's a big pen. Let's take the, the caps off and see how they look. No, don't jump over here. Okay, so now when you compare them with the uh, the caps off, which is probably how you're gonna write with this pen, likely, uh, this is a much more reasonably sized pen. Like it is the same size as a Diplomat Arrow. It's the same size as the Estabrook Oversize, which is the SD, oh, SD, Estabrook SD Oversize, goodness. And then the 823, like uh, the, the All-Star, they're all about the same size when you take that cap off. This cap is just a giant, right? So uh, this, when you take the cap off and you're ready to write with it, it's a totally normal size pen with a perfectly cromulent weight. And, uh, you know, stick around for all the sizes and everything for this pen, uh, links and diameters and all that jazz uh, here at the end of the video. But I think this pen is well positioned in the 156 to 196 range, especially with that custom journaler nib uh, that Gina does. Gina does really nice work. I have a couple of her nibs and I enjoy both. So uh, check out the Esterbrook Camden and also, so there are only 250 of these, I think, in each mode. So 250 black, uh, black marble, 250 of the green, etc. So go over to Pen Boutique and uh, tell them I sent you so that they know. Uh, you'll find uh, down in the description a link to this pin on Pen Boutique's site. Also a link to their YouTube page. Go over to their YouTube page and give them some love. They just started that up a little while ago and, uh, you know, throw them some views. Go over there and say hi. Uh, Lena is good people, so uh, check that out. All right, so thank you very much for for uh, hanging out with me for the last uh, while looking at this Estabrook Camden. I think it's a really nice pen uh, that was a little bit surprising to me and I get surprised every time I use it. I'm like, this is, I like it better every time. So thank you very much to Lena at Pin Boutique. Thank you to Carrie at Ken Row, And thank you for you, to you for watching these videos. Also like, comment, and uh, hit that subscribe. If you're not already a, su a subscriber, become a subscriber. That's the thing to do. All right, we'll see you later. Peace out. Thank you.